All right, we're gonna go over some Paul in context. I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting sick of the, what the, the church has done is, is take everything he t everything that uh, he has said and try to find ways to twist it, cherry pick, and take out of context. So, you know, I want to go over uh, when we see the word law. When Paul writes about the law. You can't just lump everything together that you want. You can't take everything that God ever said, said to do and to not do, and say, okay, so look at Paul said it's all done away with. I, I, I mean, come on. Like when you look, when you phrase it that way, it, it, it sounds just absolutely ridiculous, right? But, and I don't think the church is even maybe saying that. Maybe they say, you know, some of the commandments are good, but we don't have to do them, all this stuff. They, they, they're cherry picking, they're dancing around. It's, it, it's, it's awkward. You know, it's like, come on, like, let's, instead take the context of what paul what's the situation who is he talking to what's what what's he what's he saying in the verses leading up to and after what's going on you can't you can't bumper sticker paul it's gonna it's it's, it's gonna lead to uh it's gonna end in end bad so you know even the church will say okay with the law and, and they'll make up these terms these aren't in the bible they'll say there's a civil there's a ceremonial there's a moral law and those aren't those aren't terms in your Bible. That's first of all, that's the problem. And, and you know, second, of all, what they're trying to do is they're kind of poking and feeling their way for truth. Like they they see something in there and they go, okay, well, clearly we're not stoning people, we're not sacrificing animals, so we gotta categorize these laws. And okay, like hey, you might be onto something because yeah, we're, sacrificial law was added because of transgression in Galatians three nineteen. It's transgression transgression to what though? to there had to be a law in place for there to be a transgression to occur so it was to the covenants of promise it was uh you know the sin of idolatry uh so the sacrificial law was added and we know that uh yeshua came and he did something that the blood of bulls and goats can never do that's hebrews 10 4 and it's, it's sacrificial law is over so so you got to understand that what is going on like what law is, is is paul talking about because even the church will say there's different different things about the law well they don't understand the law because they don't they don't really think it's for them they don't they don't want to seek out the law they don't want to ask god for truth and learn right so what law that's the key so like another another situation that paul is fighting in romans galatians all over they see you see in acts is, is the circumcision party a very real and powerful group go search it out that said you had to be circumcised in order to be saved now um I, you know, I've seen some people, some writings, and I, and I, I, I would say they're from. There's a writing where it's a, someone is countering one of the early church fathers who was going off the rails about, you know, anti, you know, anti covenant and they, like, none of the stuffs for us. And this this uh, person was Jewish, who I think was part of the circumcision party, was wrote a very reasonable defense and say, hey, wait a minute, like you guys are taking this Jesus character and you don't even believe the things that he said. No, he was spot on. So I mean. I, you know, I, I read that stuff and I'm like, you know, I can see why people with the, the circumcision party would have been influential. I think even a lot of them probably meant well, but they were also leading people astray with like, hey, like, you know, you want to, you got to keep the circumcision in order to be saved. And that, and, and that was the law that they were oftentimes fighting. And like, so when you start reading the, the, the apostles writings and, and Acts and Paul's writings and you see how many times it's like, man, why do they keep talking about circumcision and division of the flesh and all this stuff like works of the flesh, like all the time, don't gloss over it anymore. Stop. I actually go, okay, there's another one. There's another one. It's, oh, Galatians, 26 times or whatever times it's mentioned. Or Romans, look how many times it's mentioned and, and brought up. Why? Why is it brought up so much? Like, I'm asking you right now, when you start reading this, don't gloss over it anymore. Because right now, that's what that's what the church is doing when they get to that spot they don't quite understand it they go okay well ah whatever circumcision we don't do we don't you know it's not a thing you know it's you know um so don't do that anymore you got to see what paul and the apostles were teaching was the circumcision of the heart the inward man uh and that's from deuteronomy 10 12 through 16 it's deuteronomy 30 it's in you know it's in jeremiah ezekiel i mean there's a the, the circumcision of the heart is a is a it's a uh it's all over the bible so they, they were coming and teaching circumcision of the heart when you circumcise your heart to obey the covenants of promise you become grafted into the commonwealth of israel no longer a stranger to the promises and no longer without hope you're no longer a gentile there's you know there's no such thing as a as a gentile a, a christian or that or at least that term should not be used anymore is my contention like it should be you are you're part of israel you're part of the covenants of promise uh that that's the term we want right like and no longer saying like that was for the Jews only. Well, okay, the Jews were just one tribe, and that was Judah, the southern. The that's where the word comes from, southern tribe. Uh, Judah was Judah and, and Benjamin, right? So the northern tribe was the rest of that was it. We referred to as Israel. You can read Second Kings seventeen on that for more. 
so don't say that you're not part of the you know that you're a gentile and uh you know don't don't separate yourself from the covenants because the covenants are not what paul is speaking against when he's talking about law how could he how could paul or myself or you or pastor bob how could they do away with the covenants as an eternal covenant the ten commandments being an eternal covenant god said that so if you're arguing against what I'm saying here, then you're arguing against God because God's the one that said that. So you need to know what law is being talked about. You need to, you need to understand that, okay? And again, go back and just read how many times circumcision is mentioned. They were fighting against the, these people, right? They're, they were coming in and destroying the works. Acts 15, you know, Acts 15, 1, go read it. It's There was a group of people coming and saying you had to first be circumcised in order to be saved, Right? And what do they say in verse 20 and 21? They, you know, they, first of all, they give them four commands. Well, they, well, those are all from the Old Testament, by the way. Those are all God's God's instructions. And they're saying, it's the apostles saying, hold on, just get rid of the get rid of the apostasy that you're participating in amongst the heathens, and come come to the Sabbath, uh, come to the synagogue on the Sabbath. We're going to teach you what Moses said about Yeshua, because when you learn that, you learn about the spirit of prophecy. You learn about what, what what Yeshua, how he came and fulfilled all these prophecies, how he's all over in the Old Testament, everywhere you. you when, you, when you, you see it, you can't unsee it. And you're going to go in there and you're going to learn that. You're going to learn what Yeshua taught. You're going to learn why prophecy is true. You're going to learn why it's still active and happening today. And you're going to learn the commandments. You're going to learn God's ways. And it's and it's God's going to teach you through his Holy Spirit of grace. That's, that's what grace is. Grace is what teaches you to obey. You know, grace is not what the church is telling you. You know, uh, they, they have it. They have that definition wrong. And it can be simply proved by looking at what grace is written or written about you see it used in the New Testament, go look, uh, read those all those verses, and it'll tell you very clearly that, you know, grace is what's going to strengthen you to repent and to obey and to walk in God's ways, right? It's it's this Holy Spirit. Uh, it's, a, it's the Holy Spirit of grace. And then in John 14, 15 through 17, the Holy Spirit of truth, right? You get the, you get the second helper. It's in there. It says help, the second helper. You start obeying the covenant, you get the second helper. And now I've heard someone say to me the other day, oh, you're that's blasphemy. There's a holy. You're saying there's two spirits. Well, uh, yeah. Well, okay. I mean, go read Revelation four. I think it's Revelation four. The seven talks about the seven spirits of God. Now you make sense of that. I, I don't have an answer for that. Uh, but it's you, you know it's in your Bible. But you know the sad thing is the church doesn't teach the book of Revelation. Uh, I don't know if it's out of fear or ignorance or both. Uh, but there's so much there's so much meat in Revelation and yeah a lot of it's still you know. Eschatology. We're trying to figure. We don't know exactly what's going to happen in the end time, but there's a whole lot in there that's very clear, like Revelation fourteen twelve, Revelation twelve seventeen, Revelation twenty two fourteen. Very clear about keeping the commandments, and keep means to guard. You guard them in your heart. That's what a circumcised heart is. It's it's guarding the commandments. You're not. No one's no one's telling you to be perfect, right? But a, a, a circumcised heart treasures them, and and then when people speak against them, it, it troubles the spirit, like the Holy Spirit that resides in us. It, it's we don't like that. You know, that's God's spirit being stirred up. It's like we want to God, we protect them. We actually we treasure them. They're very important to us, including the Sabbath. It's very important to us. It's like, oh, why do you keep talking about the Sabbath? Oh, I'm so sick of hearing about it. It's like it's we talk about it because it's important to us. It's the same reason we're trying to rebuke sin and love our neighbor as ourselves. Leviticus 7, 19, 17 through 18 is that we don't we hate we detest the, the spots on the on the garment. We 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 don't want that. Like we want uh we want the church to come come out of the apostasy right now, come out of the idolatry, get rid of Christmas and Easter, maybe st get rid of Halloween. How about like you can't even get rid of that? So, but if you you know Christmas and Easter stuff, you gotta wake up to it. I, I don't care if everybody you know and does it. If you if you've taught your kids all along and you, you, you if you're too deeply committed, like I'm sorry, like we all had to repent of it. I had to repent of it. I you know I, I did it for a long time and I didn't know any better. And I you know but once you know. You, you got to stop. And if you're getting warned, do you think that God's not going to wake up people in these times that are going to warn the church to get out of um, get out of that uh, apostasy, out of that idolatry? Time and time again, you know, the church goes, "Oh, I can't believe you read the Old Testament." Israel, they time and time again, they keep going back to idolatry. Oh, what a bunch of morons! Oh, they can't tear down the high place. A bunch of bunch of idiots. Oh, thankfully that's not us. We don't do that. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> uh, uh, go look at the. Uh, Go look at the, the, the all the churches with all their imagery, idolatry, their steeples, uh, their 
you know, the Catholic Church, don't get me started. I mean, it's all over the place. Um, but if you, you know, you think, oh, I go to a non-denominational church and, you know, we don't do any of that. It's like, yeah, go to go to my big mega church. I went, you know, you go there in December and it's a uh, 20-foot Christmas tree decked in silver and gold, right? Yeah, I, you know, you and you can't you can't Christianize uh, these these things. You can't it, it, it actually. You can say that you can. It's like, oh, God, well, can God turn something like this? No, God just wants nothing to do with it. God tells you that the unholy will corrupt the holy. That's Leviticus. That's Haggai two. You can go look at Haggai two for the condensed version. Uh, I think it's eleven through fourteen in that area right there. It's going to tell you that the unholy is going to corrupt the holy because God does not want the unholy having anything to do with him. So you can't Christianize these things. You can't, or you can't make them. You can't make them holy. You, or I, or Pastor Bob can't take something unholy and make it holy. It's just not a thing. It's not the way it works. Can't do it. God makes something holy. Holy means set apart. That's why God tells you be holy because He's holy. Be set apart because He's set apart. Be set apart from the ways of the world. And the whole world is celebrating Christmas and Easter. They are. Any go go anywhere. They all are. It, it's part of the world. And 2.4 billion Christians is not the, the the narrow path right now. I'm sorry. And I know there's there's people in there that are are waking up and they woke up and and they're you know they're going to be part of the remnant, part of the say, part of part of whatever uh, you want to call it. But the, the reason so many of us are upset and urgent is because there's just not enough. There's not enough people listening. There's 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 too many people that when you tell them to obey God, they stiffen their necks and say, "We will not do it. No, we will not do that. No." And here's why. And then they'll they'll take and they'll misquote Paul. Come on, people. 